This afternoon, you can still see blood where neighbors say a man believed to be the victim's live in boyfriend took aim at her. Neighbors say at the time of the shooting, the woman was holding a little boy. A terrifying morning for neighbors living near Tyreman and Whitcomb on Detroit's west side after a double shooting. I seen the lady and she was just laying there in the middle of the street, so I thought she might have been drunk or something. I thought she had spilled her liquor or something, so I stopped. And I went to get out to go see what was wrong with her, and then I think there was blood. That shooting happened around 6:40 Thursday morning. Police say a woman believed to be in her 20s and a young boy had been shot. So I checked the pulse to see if they were still alive, but they wasn't. So I went to work on the little boy. Police say the woman died on the scene. The young boy was taken to an area hospital in critical condition, but is now stable. So I'm really, these kids are young. You know what I mean? And it's just tragic. And then the baby, it's just fresh in my mind. Her laying there, her eyes open, like nobody could do nothing for her. A neighbor who didn't want to be identified for fear of retaliation says she believes the gunman was the victim's boyfriend. She says she saw the shooter standing over the victim in the street before taking off down a nearby alley. That had to be really scary. Yeah, it was scary. I didn't know if he was going to come back or um, if somebody else was involved or... Yeah, it definitely has me reeling right now. I wish I knew more. I wish you would have told me more to where I could help her. A person they put their hands on you, they don't love you. I don't care what you say. A man that put his hand on a uh, female, it's not, that's not love. Absolutely not. From now on, when somebody asks me, who you think you is, I'm going to say, I think I'm Big Meech. Larry Hoover. Whipping work. Hallelujah. Ah! This is the gut-wrenching tale of Javon Miller, a 19-year-old woman with the wisdom of an elder and the drive of a born leader. She was determined to give her son everything he could ever want, while still being able to stand on her own two feet. Juggling multiple jobs, raising her son, and supporting her abusive boyfriend, 22-year-old Virgil Brown, was draining her physically and mentally. But Miller had enough of Brown's brutality. She tried to break free, but Brown, in a vicious act of cowardice, shot her in the head and their three-year-old son in the neck, leaving their bodies to rot in the middle of the street. This is the harrowing story of Javon Miller's fight for survival, a battle she tragically lost to a monster masquerading as a man. Welcome to the American Crime, Femicide Channel. Please like, subscribe, share, and hit the notification bell for future uploads. This tale takes place in Detroit, Michigan, a city and state that has one of the highest rates of black femicide, adding to that rate is the now murdered victim, Javon Miller. In her short time on this earth, she was an ambitious hustler from an early age, learning how to braid and style hair. On one of her social media posts, she wrote, I'm starting a business and I would love my family's support. I am really getting better and better at this hair thing. This just a little sample but I'm taking this very seriously for my babies. And I already have my own booking site just need to grow my clientele enough to make it to a salon of my own, support and help me grow. Grow with me, success starts now. I mean serious business no time for games I gotta get to this bag, baby. I got mouths to feed like everyone else. No time wasted for no one, I want a successful professional career and I'm going to get that. Believe that. Along with being a hairstylist with her own website that showcased the variety of styles she could create along with the cost, she ran a food business out of her home as well. She was able to do all this while working as a food worker at McDonald's, Lil Caesars, and Foot Locker and going to high school. While in school, she met Virgil Brown. Brown was someone who made her laugh, someone who was smitten by her, and thought she was his soulmate. The feelings were mutual, and after a couple months of dating the two were making plans to be together for life. While those closest to them felt they were moving too fast, Miller didn't care. She was providing for herself, and had made the decision to move into an apartment with Virgil. Shortly afterwards the two discovered they were expecting a child. They welcomed Christian on July 28, 2020, during the pandemic. Thank you! Christian was a happy baby. 
always smiling, and laughing. He was adventurous, playful, and loved to spend his time with both parents. Yes! You go, boy! After a couple of years, the two welcomed another baby. On October 19, 2022, this time a little girl named C. Myra, she was a sweet, joyful baby that loved to talk. She suffered from an unknown illness. Sadly, after four months, she passed away on March 3, 2023. Both Javon and Virgil were devastated. Miller expressed her sadness on social media but vowed to keep her daughter's memory alive. How could they lose a sweet little angel that God had just given them? They were forced to move forward without her, but they carried her in their hearts. Christian, who was still a baby at the time, wasn't able to process the loss. He was so happy to be a big brother. Miller just threw herself back into work. She wanted to become a nurse. She planned to put herself through school and work towards obtaining her degree. As time passed, her relationship with Virgil took a turn. Virgil had made post throwing up gang signs but for the most part he stayed out of trouble. He loved to cook, come home to be with his son, and hanging out with Javion. She was someone he was planning to spend the rest of his life with. His love for Javon turned into control and abuse. The responsibilities and upkeep of their shared apartment fell solely on Javon, and the pressure became unbearable. As Virgil's behavior grew more violent, Javon knew she had to leave the relationship to protect herself and her son. However, leaving a man with a volatile temper is never easy. Javon's fear for her and her son's lives grew with each passing day. On May 30, the situation reached its horrific climax. An argument erupted between Javon and Virgil while they were in the car. Javon, summoning all her courage, told Virgil that she was done and that the relationship was over. But Virgil, in a brutal act of cowardice and rage, pulled out a gun. In a split second, he shot Javon in the head and then turned the gun on their son Christian, shooting him in the neck. He left their bodies in the middle of the street and fled the scene like the coward he was. Neighbors, hearing the commotion, rushed to help. Javon lay lifeless, murdered by the man who was supposed to love her. One neighbor performed CPR on Christian, and miraculously, he began to breathe. When paramedics arrived, Javon was pronounced dead at the scene. All right, now to a woman found shot to death on, in Detroit and a toddler critically wounded. Detroit police telling us a domestic dispute between a man and a woman led up to the violence, shaking up a neighborhood on Detroit's west side. 7 News Detroit reporter Ryan Marshall has the story. What appears to be, at least preliminarily, is a domestic dispute between a man and a woman. It ends violently. This neighborhood on Detroit's west side clearly shaken. Detroit police responded to calls around 6.40 a.m. of a black woman shot dead on the city's west side. Police found the woman in her 20s and what neighbors say was her three-year-old son lying in the middle of the street near the corner of Whitcomb and Tyreman. He was conveyed to a local hospital um, for treatment. Currently, he is in critical condition. We just received information that the suspect has turned himself in at the 6th Precinct. Neighbors told 7 News Detroit they believe the suspect is the woman's 18-year-old boyfriend. Now, while police did not disclose the nature of their relationship, nor did they confirm his age, they do say they knew each other and that it's possibly domestic violence related. I checked the pulse to see if they were still alive, but they wasn't. So I went to work on the little boy. A good Samaritan who lives nearby says she was returning from purchasing lottery tickets when she discovered the woman and her son lying in the middle of the street. The Samaritan says she performed CPR on him. And then I went to post and then his body jumped. So he came back and then I felt the pulse. So then he was gone again. So I started again. Then there's a lady named Janine. She came up 
And then she started pushing down on his chest, trying to help. And I said, let's do the breath compressions, too. The shooting happened while many children were outside waiting for their school buses. Several neighbors expressed deep concerns for their own children's safety. It's not just my kids' safety. I love all the children living in the neighborhood. Everybody, we, we live like a family. And I don't want anything to happen to any of us. We have a moral obligation to keep our children safe. Um, unknown this relationship, however, if it was a conflict, we need to learn how to deal with conflict other than using gunfire. And this investigation is ongoing. Detroit police say since the suspect turned himself into police, there's no other threat to the public. Detroit man has been charged in the fatal shooting of a 19 year old mother that also injured their young son. 22 year old Virgil Brown faces a few charges, including first degree murder. Prosecutors say Brown had an altercation with his girlfriend, Javon Miller, at the intersection of Whitcomb and Tyerman on May 30th. Things turned violent. Police say he shot her. She died and their three-year-old son was injured. We're told he's still in the hospital this afternoon. By the way, in early reports, we were told that the son was six, but that has now been corrected. Today, Brown remains behind bars. Following this horrific tragedy, Javon's mother and grandmother spoke out, sharing their grief and the devastating impact domestic violence has on families. I never thought in a million years I'd hear a phone call like that. I watch it on TV, but never that I actually have to experience it, ever. Tanisha Hawkins met with me to share about her daughter, Javon Miller. She lost Javon to gun violence one week ago today, and each day she's been trying to cope, trying to process her untimely death. 19-year-old Javon was shot and killed after Detroit police say an altercation between her and her boyfriend escalated. It happened outside their apartment at the corner of Whitcomb and Tyerman. Investigators say 22-year-old Virgil Dan Brown turned himself in. The fact that you left my baby outside like trash. Hawkins says Javon was anything but that. She says her daughter was working on becoming a nurse like herself and was full of life. Describe Javon. She's very photogenic, very funny, very loving. She loved on everybody, anybody that knew her. Knew that she was a silly person, but she loves you with all her heart. Close to Javon's heart, her three-year-old son, Christian, who police say was also shot by Virgil Brown, his father, his own flesh and blood. I could see in his face that he don't have no remorse for what he did. Christian, who is being treated here at Children's Hospital, suffered critical injuries as a result of being shot in the neck. But his loved ones say he is on the road to recovery. At this point, how, how is Christian doing? He's doing good. Yeah, great. Thank God. I keep thanking God every day. And first thing I wake up is thank God because he's doing so much better. She's praying Christian isn't paralyzed and that he doesn't remember the incident that now has them raising a voice for Javon and others who may find themselves in an abusive relationship, be it physical or emotional. I wish I knew more. I wish you would have told me more to where I could help her. A person, they put their hands on you, they don't love you. I don't care what you say. A man that put his hand on a uh, female, it's not, that's not love. Absolutely not. If you see the size, Bro. get away immediately. Miller's courage to walk away from a violent relationship to save her son should never have led to her brutal murder at the hands of Brown. Their son, Christian, still a baby, miraculously survived his father's attempt to kill him. This entire tragedy stemmed from an irate, hostile, and bitter man who couldn't handle rejection when Javon told him their relationship was over. The aftermath of this horrific event has left a three-year-old child without a mother and a father. The family, already reeling from the loss of their youngest member a year ago, is now plunged into deeper grief and trauma. The devastation, brutality, and loss inflicted upon Javon's family and community will sadly impact them for the rest of their lives, especially Christian. As Miller's family grapples with her tragic loss, we must keep them in our thoughts and prayers. May Christian make a full recovery, and may his mother, Javon Miller, rest in peace alongside her daughter. This story is a stark reminder of the fatal consequences of domestic violence and the urgent need for support and protection for those trying to escape it.